So here's a quick question. Where's the biggest stash of gold on Earth? Well, thanks to the movies, my first thoughts go to Fort Knox, the iconic U.S. vault known for its security and secrecy. But no, that's not it. Potentially, more than 99% of Earth's gold might not be in any vault. It's likely hidden deep inside the planet, in the core. And now, scientists say, we might not need to dig 1,800 miles to get to it. Because some of that gold? It might be making its way up, oozing through a volcano. But first, what makes gold so interesting and valuable? Well, gold has always been more than just a shiny metal. It's shaped economies and driven empires. The first pure gold coins were created in 540 BCE by King Croesus of Lydia, an Iron Age kingdom located in what is now modern-day Turkey. As a metal, it's rare, but not too rare. It's a great conductor of electricity and heat. It doesn't rust, tarnish, or react much with anything. It's easy to melt, mold, carry, and measure. And on top of all that, it's beautiful, durable, and incredibly useful. Not just for jewelry, but also in electronics, medicine, and space tech. Yep, it's even used to coat astronaut helmet visors and spacecraft to reflect harmful infrared radiation. Humans have mined about 200,000 tons of gold, which is enough to make a cube that's roughly 72 feet on each side. Since gold doesn't really break down, a lot of the gold we use today could actually be really old, even dating back to prehistoric times. It's also one of the most hoarded and secretly stashed valuables on Earth. Between private collections, national reserves, and heirloom jewelry passed down through generations, we might never know exactly how much is really out there. But we do assume that 99.99% of it is still trapped within Earth's core. So, how can there be gold within the core, and what does that mean? Right under our feet is Earth's outer skin, the crust. It might feel solid and massive to us, but compared to the rest of the planet, it's paper thin. Beneath that is the mantle, which is basically a giant layer of hot rock. It's not quite solid, not quite liquid, more like a slow-moving putty that flows over time. Then we have the outer core, which is a swirling sea of molten metal, mostly iron and nickel. It's spinning around and creating Earth's magnetic field. And in the very center is the inner core, a solid metal ball, hotter than the surface of the Sun, but still solid because the pressure down there is extremely high. When Earth was first forming, it was super hot. So hot that the entire planet was like a giant cosmic lava lamp, bubbling with molten metal and rock. In that state, every element could move freely, and the heaviest ones sank toward the center. Gold, along with other dense metals like platinum and ruthenium, is really heavy. So those metals naturally sank to the core in a process called planetary differentiation. Think of it like oil and water in a bottle. If you shake it and then let it settle, the heavier substance sinks to the bottom and the lighter one rises to the top. In Earth's case, lighter materials floated upward and eventually form the crust. Now gold has a really cool characteristic. It really likes to stick to iron. That's why scientists call gold a siderophile, which literally means gold-loving. So when iron started sinking, gold followed it down, straight to the center of the planet. On top of that, gold is super heavy, nearly 20 times heavier than water. So gravity helped pull it even deeper. That's why today, the Earth's crust only has tiny traces of gold, while the other 99% remains unreachable in the core, 1,800 miles below our feet. But that's not all. Some theories suggest that maybe 200 million years after Earth was formed, the planet got hit by a bunch of metal-rich meteorites. Those space rocks were loaded with gold, and since Earth's crust had already cooled by then, that gold stayed near the surface, and we've been using it ever since. So if most of Earth's gold is trapped below, what exactly was discovered oozing out? Well, scientists recently studied volcanic rocks in Hawaii. 
and they found out that these rocks contained a rare version of the element ruthenium, which is called ruthenium-100. Now, this little isotope isn't something you usually find hanging out near the surface. It has a kind of chemical footprint that says, hey, I came from way down deeper. And when we say deep, we mean core mantle boundary deep, the layer where Earth's molten metal core meets the rock above it. Basically, it's the basement no one thought you could access, the basement where we assume that gold is hiding. So how did these rocks get from the core all the way up to Hawaii? Vacation! Well, no. Actually, it all comes down to something called a mantle plume. We know that the lower part of Earth, near the core, is insanely hot. Every now and then, a big, superheated blob of rock starts rising through the mantle. Slowly. Like, really slowly. We're talking a few inches per year. But over millions of years, that adds up. This rising column of hot rock is the mantle plume. It doesn't blast upward like a volcano. It slowly rises and carries material from deep, deep inside the Earth. That includes elements and chemical fingerprints from the core mantle boundary. However, here's the cool part. When that plume finally reaches the surface, it punches through the crust and creates a volcanic hotspot. That's what happened in Hawaii. The islands were literally built by this deep earth plumbing system. The lava that erupts there isn't just melted surface rock. It's a blend of material that's been on a journey from thousands of miles below. But I can hear your thoughts now. Wait, what about gold? Well, sadly, we're not talking about gold bars coming from a volcano. What's actually leaking is tiny atomic-level traces of metals like ruthenium. However, where there's ruthenium, there's a good chance gold is tagging along. Remember when we said that gold is a siderophile, meaning that it really likes iron? Well, the ruthenium has the same property. It's an iron-loving element, which means it tends to bond with iron and sink to the core during planet formation. So if ruthenium from the core is managing to ride up to the surface through mantle plumes, it strongly suggests that gold and other similar heavy metals could be doing the same. In other words, scientists are using ruthenium as a chemical trail marker because it's easier to detect and analyze. Meaning that gold might be there too, just in amounts too small to measure with current instruments. This discovery suggests that all the siderophile elements are leaking out of the core. But this opens an opportunity to ask, has this happened before, and if so, what could it mean? Well, maybe Earth's core has been leaking metals all along and we just never noticed. The truth is, we're still just scratching the surface, or in this case, the core. For all we know, this kind of deep Earth leak has been going on for millions, maybe even billions of years. But until now, we haven't had the tools to notice. The technology that scientists use to spot ruthenium-100 is brand new. It has only recently become precise enough to pick up these tiny chemical hints. So this might be the very first time we've caught Earth's core doing this. And if that's true, it's kind of a big deal. Because it means the inside of our planet isn't sealed off and silent. And it might still be shaping the surface in ways we never imagined. Not with explosions and earthquakes, but with slow, steady, atomic-scale signals rising through the rock. We're only just beginning to detect these signals. And if rare metals are making that journey upward, there's a lot more happening deep inside Earth than we thought. This isn't just a one-time discovery. It could be the start of a whole new way of understanding our planet. Cool, huh? That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.